Our next speaker is uh, someone that I have had the pleasure of knowing for a very long time. Uh, he's probably one of the most, probably one of the smartest, most intellectual people I've ever met in my life. And when I sit next to him, I get scared. Because when we have dinner, you know, we go on to these many, many discussions that are just amazing and stimulating. And he's just, uh, he's just an icon for me and for many, many people. He's also an icon in the free market space. He's an, an amazing free market capitalist and someone who has been very near and dear to my son. Uh, you've sent him many books and authored them and signed them, and it's inspired him. So George Gilder is an icon, I will tell you. He is a high-tech venture capitalist, the author of 20 books. He's very prolific. I don't know how he does it. And the co-founder of the Discovery Institute. He has spoken at the Money Show since 1981. Last year, he discussed his book, The Scandal of Money, which I adored, and its theory of Bitcoin and gold. Now, he will expound the themes of his new book, Life After Google, The Fall of Big Data and the Rise of Blockchain Economy, which I can't wait to hear, which echoes life after television. Life After Google presents a vision of a new system of a new world, and source of wealth he calls the crypto -sism. Wow, I can't wait. Please help me give a warm welcome to an amazing icon in this business forever and with everyone, George Gilder. Welcome to the Cryptocosm. Life after Google. You thought it would never come, didn't you? Um, well, I wrote back in uh, early 1990s, I wrote Life After Television and said that the computer of the next era will be as portable as your watch, as personal as your wallet. It would recognize speech. It would navigate streets. It would collect your news and your mail. It just might not do windows, <laughs> but it'd do doors. It opened doors to your future. And uh, Steve Jobs, I've since learned, uh, bought the book in volume and passed it out. So I imagine that I might have had a small influence on uh, the rise of the, of the iPhone. And uh, life after television uh, of, and telecosm, its, it's a sort of long version, uh, had quite a career. And now we have a new system of the world, Google's system of the, system of the world. And everybody thinks that it's established forever. It's a monopoly that can't be overthrown. It's going to rule all our lives uh, forever unless the government mobilizes a whole bunch of lawyers to bring it down. I think this is a complete misunderstanding of Google. This is Google's uh, system of the world. Now, c most of us are familiar with its search uh, capabilities. It's uh, 42 uh, megahertz find and fetch engine. Uh, but uh, it's changed its goal now from search to satisfy, to answer questions, and, and uh, to uh, accumulate big data in such volumes and with such a linkage to artificial intelligence that it transcends all the usual uh, creative work in laboratories by human scientists and engineers. And cloud computing uh, is joined with the big data and the machine mind. And all of it is given away for free so they get the entire market. That's 
Google system of the world. Uh, but now we're moving into the cryptocosm, and these are will be familiar figures of the cryptocosm. Uh, Craig Wright is, is uh, debatably uh, Satoshi, and certainly was affiliated with Satoshi. Um, uh, Valeric Buterin was a Teal Fellow, lured from college to do the Bitcoin magazine. And uh, as, as a Bitcoin magazine writer, he went to Israel where he uh, encountered the idea of colored coins and, and master coins and, and, and uh, self-managed uh, or organizations. And uh, so he uh, developed a whole new blockchain, a whole new form of the cryptocosm, and that uh, Bitmain uh, is the amazing source of the fastest computers in the face of the earth, uh, summoned for the very specific purpose of uh, Bitcoin mining. And Bitmain was the most profitable uh, microchip company in the world last year by s some estimates, some $4 billion of profits. Uh, that's, uh, there have been various estimates, but but that would uh, eclipse NVIDIA, which also got a lot of its profits from uh, the cryptocosm. If you don't think it can happen fast, remember that in 2008, the world's four top companies in market cap were Exxon, Walmart, uh, China Petroleum, and Industrial and Commercial Bank of China. And those were the world's top companies of in valuation as recently as 2008. And 2018, it, an uh, amazing change, an amazing revolution, Apple, Amazon, Google, and Microsoft became the four top companies in market cap with uh, Facebook lagging behind in seventh. An amazing triumph for the companies of the Google era. How did it happen? Well, my basic principle from scandal of money and knowledge and power and the information, of cap information theory of capitalism that in an information age, economies can change as fast as minds can change. That's a crucial fact to understand. These great, giant, leviathan companies seem impregnable until they fall. And uh, we remember IBM and digital equipment and HP and all these giants that seemed previously immutable, but that are now uh, subsiding into the background of our lives. In 2023, if you project from today, you might suppose that the four leading companies by market cap will be Chinese. Uh, the growth trajectory is larger in these. And uh, Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu, ByteDance, these could be uh, the companies of the new era. But I believe that instead, it's going to be companies like these, uh, the cryptocosm, uh, Bitmain, Ethereum, NEO, which is the Chinese Ethereum, and Hedera, which is uh, based on a different cryptographic formula that uses the same kind of techniques that uh, the blockchain does, but purports not to be a blockchain. It does rounds rather than blocks. And uh, that's the cryptocosm. So we're moving from Google life to the afterlife. And we have 10 laws of Google, the 10 things we know to be true. This is Google's system of the world and versus the 10 laws of the cryptocosm from life after Google. And Google's law number one is focus on users. Communications first. 
Give them free stuff. That's what they want. Uh, the law of the cryptocosm is focused on security, security first, and nothing is free. Google law number two is it's best to do one thing really, really well. Be world champion in AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning based answers. Google's going to be, uh, give us all our answers from a process of big data and cloud computing that will be as far beyond human comprehension in the age of the singularity as our behavior is to our pets. Cryptocosm law number two, two is to create a secure foundation, a new architecture of the internet that provides a secure foundation for customers to do many things really, really well. And Google's law number three is uh, less controversial, but I think is fundamentally wrong as well. Fast is better than slow. That's true most of the time, but uh, the cryptocosm law recognizes that just accelerating computation does not create some emergent mind that can transcend human capabilities. Computer technology is utterly meaningless without its human programmers, without what Alan Turing called the oracles that were absolutely necessary to give any machine intelligence its validity and capability. So, uh, the cryptocosm slows the existing computer technology down as an overall system by a factor of 10,000. That brings it down into the acoustic range where people can actually hear it and know what it means. Google law number four, democracy on the web works. Keep it on the web though. Uh, Google is a hierarchy. We rule. The cryptocosm law is different. The cryptocosm is not exactly a democracy. It's more, more reflects the genius of the American founding. It's a republic. And uh, in a blockchain, if 51% uh, of the nodes can get together and control the process, they can capture the blockchain and create a 51% attack, which is Bitcoin's biggest threat. You, uh, a blockchain is based on distributing power, not on amassing power. Google law number five, you don't need to be at your desk to need an answer, yeah. Gosh, we better buy AdMob for ads on smartphones. The cryptocosm law number five is if your smartphone is smart, the least it can do is suppress ads. This, I wrote a book, The Scandal of Money, last year. This is the scandal of advertising, mobile advertising. Ads account for about 30% of customer bandwidth costs. That's what you're paying when you pay for your smartphone bandwidth. You're paying 30% to accommodate a stream of ads. The click-through rate for smartphone ads is 0.06%. The error rate of that click-through rate is 50%. You know, that's, that, I think that underestimates it. Most of the time when you click on an ad, it's a mistake. Uh, that means, in any case, given them the 50%, you get a net ad click-through rate of 0.03%. That's a fiasco. That's a scam. Uh, that is not 
uh, business. And we'll, it, you know, they aren't ads, they are minuses. Value subtracted ads, even mines, you stumble on them. Well, Brendan to the rescue. This is the Brave browser. I love the Brave browser. It's attempting to establish a whole new advertising economy through the issue of, of tokens, which uh, allow, which create a new rational structure for advertising and micropayments. Brendan Ike was the founder of, one of the founders of Netscape. He would, wrote the JavaScript programming language, which is the most widely used programming language in the world. He's one of the great figures of Silicon Valley at Netscape, and he's now uh, and head of the Mozilla Foundation. He left there. Uh, and uh, he's now uh, brave. Google law number six. Oh, this one I like. You can make money without doing evil. So they got <laughs> data centers with net zero carbon footprint through solar and windmill offsets, kind of druidical sun hinges around their uh, data centers that uh, that reflect uh, a religious cult, that uh, real money is good. And uh, the biggest waste of energy is the $5.1 trillion per day of currency trading that doesn't even establish a monetary standard that any entrepreneur can rely upon. It's, uh, that's the waste, it's true that the cryptocosm that Bitcoin mining is wasteful of energy, but it's, that waste doesn't compare with the $5.1 trillion a day. Money is a measuring stick, not a magic wand for central bankers. Google law number seven, there's always more information out there. And we can get it by giving away our services for free. This is Google Marxism at work. A lot of people don't really understand Marxism, so they think Google Marxism is some tremendous exaggeration. How could they be Marxists? Uh, they're rich. But, but the key Marxian error was to imagine that uh, the Industrial Revolution of the 19th century was the final solution for human productivity. That uh, those steam engines and turbines and looms and railroads were the ultimate human achievement of productivity. In the future, the challenge would be distributing wealth rather than creating wealth. And today, Google repeats this error. They imagine that they're machine learning, their AI, their robotics, their free model will, uh, will uh, actually uh, be the final Amer human att attainment, the uh, eschaton. And, uh, but uh, information should be owned by its creators, not by its distributors. And there's Google's law number seven, Oh, I'm going the wrong direction, sorry. <laughs> That's not gonna work. All right, um, the need for information crosses all borders is Google's uh, uh, rule number eight. But the cryptocosm respects the borders of your computer. Security is the property of the user and device, not the network, or necessarily even uh, the nation. You can be serious without a suit. We'll uh, leave that to Google's law number nine and give us your username, password, date of birth, PIN, last four <laughs> digits of your social security number, mother's maiden name, another password, favorite singer, first home address, another password, etc. Cryptocosm number nine, you can conduct transactions without committing personal data to an insecure internet. Google law number 10, great, 
just isn't good enough. We're casually great, cosmically great. Cryptocosm law number 10 is we provide an architecture of security and timestamp factuality which enables our customers to be great. Security first. So the Google system of the world is broken in 10 different ways. The cryptocosm disperses the clouds and remedies the disorders of the Google world with sky computing, where all your computers uh, are secure and can control their own data and their own access and their own identity and uh, their own content. And, uh, we have $20 billion of ICOs uh, on the Ethereum blockchain now. The remedy for the 90% drop in the number of IPOs and the 50% shrinkage of the public companies. Real money is what remains scarce when all else becomes abundant. It translates the scarcity of irreversible time into the economy and time remains scarce even when my verbiage is incomparably abundant. <laughs> and we could go on. A remedy for the poorest pyramid of the internet stack, a block stack. That's a crucial cryptocosmic company. And uh, the Chinese version of the block stack is NEO, and that's Da Hong Fei. Life after Google, half empty, half full, a cryptocopia, folks. Thank you.